So here's another Templar commandery, uh, commandery Templiere de Jalès. Uh, it's in the south of France. The Templars were everywhere. The French king had no chance at all. Oh, this is apparently also a former Templar commandery. It's probably not much to see, they made a hotel out of it. <clears throat> oh, it's big. See the coat of arms is away. Just before the revolution they took it away. And as usual they made a whole thing about it, you know, the Templars looking like the nice dudes. It's complete nonsense. They were very bad and they still are. That's why we have all the Satanism and the Sodomites all over because of these dudes, eh? The king had absolutely, he had absolutely no chance at all against this Templar conspiracy of these second, third, fourth uh, noble sons of the nobility who wanted a different, a different political system called the New World Order, which is a horizontal rule. So this is one of the 10,000 Templar commanderies that were in France and there's still a thousands to see, you know, they're everywhere, just like a McDonald's, as I always say, everywhere. It's not a rare phenomenon, not at all. This is here from the other side. Probably not much to see, it's all history, you know, but the history is still alive because we have to deal with it every day, you know, this dictatorship. Let's have a look if the door is open. Oh, it is actually. Oh, wow. Well, let's, let's have a look then. Big, eh? There were thousands of men in these days here, you know, just trying to topple the king, eh? All second, third, and fourth sons of the nobility without without any heritage or any castle or nothing, you know. So they made their own kingdom, with which we have to deal with now, which is called the Republic. Public again, re-public, that's what it means. But it's not public at all. It's not, it's just another nobility system. So this is France, you know, beautiful here. 
Well, it's probably most one of the most well, one of the most beautiful countries in the world. But don't go to Paris or Marseille or Nice. Hello. Hello, Alvina. <laughs> Na, schön geschlafen? Jetzt schon am Laser? Mm. <laughs> So I'm here in an area called uh, La Vaucluse. It's somewhere in the middle, south middle of France. See a mountain there. On the other side as well. A little village on the top. Soccer field down there. Somewhere. Can't even see it. France is one of the most beautiful countries in the world, actually. But uh, also because most of the people, they prefer to heap all together, like in Paris, Lyon, Marseille and all that. So it leaves a lot of space uh, on the countryside. It makes it really gorgeous. Like I was in Poland, you know, it was all built up, you know. No free space, I, I didn't see any of it really. Everywhere a house, everywhere something. It's like, you know, all nature and some farms. So France is really beautiful as you can see. As long as you uh, avoid Paris and the Mediterranean and like Nice, that's a Paris is a real hellhole. So is Nice, Lyon, all the big cities. Uh, there's a lot of space on the countryside. 24% of the country is forest. Um, probably 60% is green. I mean, this is not forest here, like the grass here, but it's green. Or maybe it's 70, 80 percent is green. Yeah. I guess it's more like 80 percent is green of France. And uh, just don't go to Paris, you know, don't go to the Mediterranean. You know? Bad mentality and it, it sucks. So I visited a fan of my videos here, but I couldn't even stay there. So, in spite of the fact that he invited me. Uh, there's more hospitality and like in uh, a lot of people inviting me in America, Australia, New Zealand, Germany, a lot in Germany, well, England, I, I can't go there. Scandinavia, I just can't go to all these places. I'm stuck. I just can't travel anywhere, you know, really. Crossing borders, you know, because Pharaoh won't give me any of their dog tags called passport, you know. 
They only give it to Nubians and whatever, half of Africa, because that's their agenda. Uh, uh, we white South Africans, <laughs> you know, they don't make it easy on us. Voilà, bon ben, comme je vous dis, moi j'ai travaillé sur euh, le CERN. C'était le projet dans les années 98, voire 2000. On, on faisait des, des puits pour, pour que les savants puissent travailler, au fait, pour faire la géolocalisation, tout, toute l'Internet, tout l'Internet qui a été fait, et ben, ça a été fait d'abord moitié de Suisse, moitié en France, mais c'est tous les savants du monde qui travaillaient dedans. Alors on a demandé, comme on était travailleurs, on a demandé pour pouvoir y visiter. Il nous a, il nous a fait visiter. On a pris un ascenseur, un ascenseur rapide. Je crois que ça a pris un quart d'heure à 20 minutes de descente sous terre. So he's explaining, he was working for CERN in Geneva and he had to take an elevator to go down where the CERN is under the earth. And he said it was a very fast elevator and it took 20 minutes to go deep in the earth. Alors qu'on a posé la question à ces savants qui nous faisaient visiter, on a posé la question pourquoi c'est aussi long que ça la descente, il nous a dit on descend où c'est qu'il n'y a plus d'onde, il n'y a plus aucun onde, d'onde négative ni d'onde positive. On est sous terre vraiment, vraiment où c'est qu'il peut travailler les fusions nucléaires. C'est là qu'il faisait des fusions nucléaires, exploser tout. Phoenix. Oui. Et c'est comme ça d'ailleurs, bon ben il nous a dit que d'ici deux ou trois ans, vous allez voir, vous allez avoir le, le GPS et tout, on va concurrencer l'Amérique. Ben deux ou trois ans exactement, on a eu, pardon, on a eu le GPS, on a eu, enfin toutes les navigations, le téléphone moins cher et tout, ça a explosé d'un coup, mais maintenant voilà le monde, c'est qu'on en est. So he asked the scientific guys down there, he, said, he asked them, why is it so deep? 20 minutes with an elevator, which is going really fast. So it was really very deep. And they answered him, because we need to be in a place where there's no more uh, electromagnetic uh, waves, no more radiation or waves. Alors raconte, donc les camions, ils sont construits sur place. Voilà, ben, pour, pour emmener ces, ces engins dans les puits, comme ils sont tellement énormes et les puits sont tellement profonds, mais alors vraiment surdimensionnés, les camions, ils sont construits sur place. Dès que c'est fini, dès qu'ils ont déplacé les engins, ils redémontent les camions, ils, re ils transforment les camions. Mais c'est des trucs de, euh, surdimensionnés. So he said that the, uh, the trucks down there, they are being constructed down there in the earth because they're so big and everything is so big and uh, they, they all are being put together, new lorries and trucks, um, probably hundreds of meters or a kilometer under the earth. I mean, if, it, if a fast elevator takes 20 minutes, I mean, that's really deep in the earth. Oui. Voilà, enfin. So this one here, uh, it's the same, you see. There are three V's of the Knights Templars, it's a concept of three, and they are in a square. So here it's again, you can see the, uh, the concept of three, there are the three V's of the Knights Templars, and the whole thing is, so it's, uh, the whole thing is in a square, a little yellow square, which is the concept of four, so it says square and compass. And the name uh, Malongo, it's in red and white, the Knights Templar's colors. So it says it all, it says square and compass, of course everything belongs to them. So here's a nice church here, of Pharaoh's nobility. Look, here's some needles from England. Look at the Templars V here, the same thing they put on all the, uh, the tanks and helicopters, even the Russians do it, you know, like in the, uh, the Ukraine war now. Here it is, it's like a pyramid and here as well, 
Well, why, why not take the M or the I or the L or the W or the R or the D? Why, why the A like this, you know? It all has a meaning. It's so clear, you know? It's the Templars V, which is also part of their secret alphabet. Look, they're all giving messages, you know, th secret messages. And here it says on the other side, this is the company here, it says Eastern Bypass, you know, the Orient. You know, like the, uh, the French Freemason Lodge, uh, Le Grand Orient, the Big Orient. That, that's where they went to. And, you know, it's also a Freemason code, you know, that when they ask you, like, where are you going to? Well, you have to answer, I'm going into the Orient. Well, what are you looking for? I'm looking for wisdom. You know, that, that's the secret code, you know, Eastern Bypass. I mean, what's this, you know? We're, we're being invaded by the, by the Orient, you know. Even all their so-called holy books, it's all about the Orient, the Bible and all this, and the, uh, and the Quran and whatever. We are not even Europeans, we're not even in it, you know, in the Bible. The Bible stops at the Mediterranean. We're not even in it. We don't even exist. We're inexistent for God and, and whatever they call it, or Allah, or whatever. It's an oriental book for the orientals only. You know? We are more like, you know, I'm, uh, I, I rather like this sort of, you know, like Valhalla stuff, you know, only the warriors, they go into paradise, you know, not the ones who, who get slapped on the, on the one cheek and the other cheek and he's obedient and never defends himself. I, I don't like the idea, man. I, I really don't get it, you know. So this is Templars V or the, the, uh, the sometimes they turn it around. In the first Iraq war, you know, the, uh, they, they had it on all the, the tanks. The Israeli army, they still have it on all their tanks, you know. And as some Israeli fans of mine, they told me Israel is being ruled by, by the Nazis, you know. Even the Israelis themselves, they say this, eh? So more and more, I just like this idea here, you know. This is Mjolnir, which is the hammer. Uh, I'm, I'm not into Nazism, as you know, but I, I just like the idea that only a warrior fighting for justice, he gets into paradise or Valhalla or whatever, you know. I just like the idea and it goes together with heavy metal which I like as well you know the heavy metal dudes they have this sort of things and um, yeah it's it's it's, uh, it, 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 it's more convenient to me than this this oriental sort of stuff be behavior be obedient and have yourself slapped in the one face and the other face don't defend yourselves just as the jaywalkers they they had the same thing you know then they didn't even defend themselves, you know. I like defending myself, you know. Like, you know, come on, what do you want, you know? Uh, fight for our, for our lives, fight for justice, you know. So for me, th this is what it means, you know. Fight, be courageous. Only the courageous ones, they 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 go into paradise, you know. And the other one, the other ones, they stay behind, you know. It's just collateral damage. This here is the wake-up tree. Look, there's a lot of alarms everywhere. Wakey, wakey, people. Wakey, wakey. There are more full of it. The wake-up tree. So wake up, people, and stand up. It's now or never, I tell you. It's now or never. And it's 5 to 12, eh? Wakey, wakey. The wake up tree. And that's Pharaoh. Pharaoh, us. Wakey, wakey, people. It's the time to wake up.